Now I want to get into God's Word. Are you, are you ready for the Word this morning? Amen, amen. You have to say that. <laughs> Imagine what I feel like if you're like, no. <laughs> I, want to, I want to talk to you quickly this morning about loving people. Remember last week we spoke about loving God. So this morning I, I want to talk about loving people. And, and, and we're going to look at which one is the more important one. Is it loving God or is it loving people? <laughs> We're going to answer that just now. Uh, remember Jesus said in Matthew chapter 22, he, he told us to love the Lord our God, how? All our heart, all our soul, and with all our mind. He's an all or nothing God. We love Him with everything or nothing at all. And it shouldn't really surprise us because if we're in a relationship with somebody, uh, we, we kind of want that similar commitment. You know, you can't love me a little bit and, and love that other girl as well. You know, that, that's not going to work, you know. And, and so we expect the same, and God's no different. Scripture actually tells us that He's a jealous God. And so He wants, he wants everything from us or nothing at all. That's how God wants us to love Him. And then Jesus says in the next verse, he says, this is the first and the greatest commandment, to love the Lord your God with all your heart. The first and the greatest commandment. That's why we know it as the great commandment. All right. Now he takes it a step further, and he says something very, very interesting. He says a second, in other words, a second commandment, is equally important Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, whoa, hang on. You've just said that's the greatest, to love God. Now you say this one is just as important. Do you want to tell me to love Joe Soap? <laughs> Jesus is like, I've just told you. It's equally as important. I want you to love people as you love God. You say, but... That doesn't make sense. He says, that's how I want you to love people. I, I want you to love them. Remember last week we said in the book of Revelation, uh, in chapter 2, Jesus says, I have this against you that you've left your first love. Remember that. Now, if you look at that in a different translation, in the NLT, it says this, I have this complaint against you. You do not love me or each other as you did at first. You do not love me or each other. And so God doesn't only want us to love Him, but He wants us to love one another. This is just as important as, as this. And I think you and I really see it like that. We don't realize the importance of, of these relationships. We think, wow, th you know, that's the most important. I get that. I understand that. And then Jesus says, now take it a step further. And he says, I want this, this love that you have for me, I want that to, to, to spread to the people around about you. And so here's the central thought of what I want to share with us today. I'm, I'm giving it to you up front. Loving God leads to loving people. So you cannot say you love God, but you don't really love the people around you. Oh, they're just difficult. <laughs> If we love God, if we say we love God, then we're going to love the people around us. So one of the telltale signs that we love God is if we love people. People look at our lives and they say, I, I see your love for one another. <laughs> Therefore, you must love God. And so let me give you four scriptures quickly for that. For those of you taking notes, just jot down the references. Hebrews chapter 6. Verse 10, God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for Him and how you have shown your love to Him, listen to this, by caring for others as you still do. You've shown your love to Him by caring for other people. John 13 says, By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So he says, the way you love one another, the way you treat one another, the way you speak to one another in your home shows me that there's, there's, there's a love for God. Uh, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, anyone who does not love 
does not know God because God is love. So if you have God in your life, you're going to have love for one another. 1 Peter chapter 1, you are cleansed from your sin when you obeyed the truth. So this is when we get saved, all right? So now, now that you're saved, you must show sincere love to each other as, as brothers and sisters. And then he says, love each other deeply with all your heart. There's the same word, the same instruction we had in Matthew 22, to love God with all your heart. Now he's saying, you must love one another that same way. Wow, isn't that amazing? <laughs> now how do we do that? How do we do that? Because you may be sitting here today and say, well, I think I'm a pretty lovable person. Okay, okay. <laughs> We're going to look at Scripture this morning because fortunately, this book here is actually a very practical book. And it tells us how to love one another. It puts it, puts it out very practically for us, especially in the New Testament. And so what are we going to do this morning? We're going to turn to a portion of Scripture, the most famous portion of Scripture in the entire Bible that speaks on love and how to love. 1 Corinthians 13. And what's interesting here in 1 Corinthians 13 is that Paul contrasts spiritual gifts to spiritual fruit. Now, just to refresh your memory, what is spiritual fruit? Galatians chapter 5. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. Those are the, the fruits of the Spirit, all right? And so what he's saying is he's saying you have spiritual gifts, which is the gift of healing, gift of prophecy, for instance, gift of discernment, gift of wisdom, there are a number of them. So he's contrasting the gifts to the fruit. And he's saying you can have all the gifts, but if you don't even have this one fruit called love, <laughs> he says you've got nothing. Because you see, people are impressed by the gifts. Ha. Oh, you know, that guy's got so much discernment, and he can prophesy, and he's accurate, you know. We, we're impressed by that. God's impressed by the fruit. This doesn't impress God, because he's given it to us in any case. This is what impresses him, the fruit. And so you'll find generally people go after the gifts. Scripture tells us to eagerly desire the gifts. Nothing wrong with that. Not at the expense of fruit. There's got to be fruit in our lives. There's got to be love for one another. And so what Paul does in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he says to us, he says, he says, the fruit is very important. He says, and let me, let me unpack it. Let me explain to you what this looks like. And so what are we going to do this morning? We're going to look at the fruit and then, and, and we're going to unpack it <laughs> And then we're going to rate ourselves. We're going to see how we're doing in this area. All right. So let's quickly have a look at it. Let me just read through it quickly. And I read from verse 4. He says, this is what love looks like. Love is patient and it's kind. And it does not envy and it does not boast. Or you could say brag. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others and is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. I'm going to unpack this in a moment and explain to you what that means. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, it endures through every circumstance. In other words, the good times, the bad times, love is there. And so what he is saying is, if you love one another, if you love people, you're going to have patience, kindness, respect for one another. You're not going to be self-seeking. So in other words, you're going to be selfless. You're going to tick those boxes. You're going to have those character qualities in your life. And so what I want to do quickly is I want to just run through that. What does it mean to be patient? What does it mean to be kind? And then we're going to rate ourselves on those, all right? Because we may think, oh, I'm a very lovable person. I'm telling you, Leonard, I'm cool. I'm fine. All right, let's, let's see. Let's quickly run through that list, and then we'll rate ourselves. And nobody's going to rate you. You rate yourself, all right? But God's going to look on your, on your notes there. 
So let's go. Let's, let's start the first one quickly. He starts off saying, he says, love is patience. Is, is patient. What does that mean? Patience has a long fuse. Ah, some of us already, okay, I was zero there, I'm a two there, all right? Patience means we give people grace instead of grief. Give them grace instead of the gears. <laughs> we, we patient with them. And I think we probably all have different areas where we lack patience, isn't it? For, let me, let me tell you my area and then maybe it'll help you. All right, so when I'm traveling on the highway in the fast lane and I have a law-abiding citizen in front of me doing 120 on the nose, <laughs> I'm a little bit impatient, <laughs> especially when the left-hand lane is wide open for kilometers and this guy's sitting there saying, buddy, I'm doing 120. You can sit behind me all day if you want to. All right. Now, maybe you that person. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> I don't say that when I'm sitting behind you, though. All right, because I want to do 120 plus a bit of tax, a bit of VAT. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so that's just, that's just the area. That, that is my area. So maybe your area is traffic. Maybe it's taxis. Maybe it's that difficult person at the office, you know, where, man, I battle with that. Or maybe it's incompetent people. Or maybe it's the difficult, incompetent person at the office, all right? And so I think we all have areas that we battle with. So, so rate yourself quickly. How, do you, how are you doing in this area? You thought you were an eight, all right? Just be honest, just be honest, write it down. Rate yourself. And don't look at your partner's notes there. And then he says this, he says, love is kind. Mark Twain once said, he says, he says, kindness is the language that the deaf hear and the blind see. Just think about it. When, when somebody is kind to you, uh, when it's a friend or a colleague, it doesn't matter who it is, whether it's somebody in a grocery store, when they show kindness to you or to one of your children, wow. That touches us. And it doesn't just, it touches our hearts, isn't it? Whenever somebody shows some form of kindness, it really touches us. So that's why the Bible tells us in Proverbs 3 verse 3, it says, never let loyalty and kindness get away from you. Wear it like a necklace. Write it deep within your heart. You know what it's telling us to do? Always be kind. When you leave home in the morning, man, leave your cell phone if you want to, but never leave kindness behind. When you're going into a meeting and you know this meeting is going to be a bit heated perhaps, you better make sure you take kindness with you into that meeting. You make a phone call and, and you've got to sort out some stuff. Before you make that phone call, make sure kindness is hanging around your neck. And then he says this, he says, he says, then, so that's if you live with kindness, then you will find favor with both God and people. Who doesn't want favor with God? So he says, he says, if, if you live with kindness, you'll find favor with both God and people, and you will gain a good reputation. You know what he's saying? You sow kindness, you will reap kindness. And not just from the people around you, you'll reap it even from, from God. You see, kindness moves the heart of God toward us. It just does. Why is that? Because God is kind. It's one of the attributes of God. Psalm 145 says, The Lord is righteous in everything He does. He is filled with kindness. He's filled with kindness. And when you go and have a look at Scripture, when you look at the New Testament, you can see it in Jesus' life. Wherever Jesus went, He showed kindness and compassion. You can read story after story after story. 
Kindness and compassion, kindness and compassion. Why is it so important in Jesus' life? Because Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's what he's like. Kindness and compassion. And so when you and I are kind to people around us, it moves the heart of God. And guess what happens? He showers us with kindness. We get that back from him. Now, being kind is not conditional. What do I mean by that? It means that we are not only kind to those who are kind to us. We are not only kind to those who are nice to us. We are kind to those who are mean to us, who are not kind to us. Kindness is not conditional. If we are kind, we are kind. It doesn't matter how they treat us. That's how we treat others. So, how are you doing in this area? Rate yourself quickly out of 10. All right? One being poor, 10 being great. And then he says, love does not envy. It is not jealous. Now, I'm sure you've seen this. I've seen it. We've seen so many, so many couples where jealousy has destroyed relationships. I, I can't tell you over the years, 20 odd years of, in ministry, how many couples I've seen where it's been jealousy that's destroyed them. And the one thing I don't understand is you'll find when people battle with anger, when they battle with pornography, you know, I, I've been battling with this, it's wrong. But when it comes to jealousy, somehow they excuse, well, it's just the way I am, you know, it's just, no, it's a bad habit. And we can't excuse a bad habit. We've got to learn to deal with that thing. Because, you see, love does not envy. The Bible says if we really love somebody, we're not going to walk around jealous all the time. H have you ever had somebody, um, something good happen to you? Somebody blesses you. Or you get a promotion. Or you get a new car or something like that. And then um, the people who you thought would be happy for you and excited for you, strangely enough, they're not. And you, you can't understand it. And it's almost like the attitude is, you, you know, why, why is this happening to you? And something like that never happens to me. It's, it's not fair. What's that? Jealousy. They're envious. And they're not your enemies. <laughs> Very often it's, it's our friends. It's our, it's our family sometimes. That, that, that battle with us. And again, that's not love. Love does not envy. All right. So I think the Bible says if, if we love people, we're going to want the best for them. If we love them, we're going to be excited when they get a promotion, when they pay off their house, when they get a new car, even though it may be a much nicer car than what we have. Man, I'm excited for them. I rejoice with them. That's love. All right. So how are you doing in this area, by the way? Ah, Leonard, write it down, write it down. And then he carries on and he says, love is not boastful. In other words, it does not brag. When you have real love for somebody, uh, you're happy when they achieve something good. So whether it's an academic achievement, uh, they've just, whatever it is, whether it's a sports achievement whether it's at work, a promotion or something, man, we're happy for them and, and we rejoice with them and we don't, have to, we don't have to have a better story. Somebody, this, you know, this often happens when somebody is telling you they've just achieved this and you think, but I also achieved that or I know so-and-so and they actually did better. And so what do we do? Yes, man, you know, my, my, my good friend in, in, our, in our small group, he's also got, <laughs> what have we done? We've just taken the limelight off of them. We've just, we've just deflated them completely. Don't tell about your own story. Don't tell about the friend that has a better car, better qualification. Or, man, let the limelight be on them. Give them full attention. Make, make them feel good in that moment. All right. So, out of 10, how are you doing there? How are you doing? And then he says, love does not dishonor others. Now, the opposite of dishonoring is honoring. 
And God wants us to honor the people around about us, everybody. To honor simply means to show respect. That's the simplest way I can explain it. Just to show respect. And it doesn't mean that they are better than you or more important than you. It just means I, I want to show God's love. And so I want, to, I want to honor them. And God expects us to do that, especially to those in authority over us. Scripture tells us to. And so to the young people, those are your parents. Always honor. You don't have to agree. You don't have to approve. Honor them. To your teachers, your coaches. For the rest of us, maybe your boss, maybe a manager or somebody like that. Show honor. That's love. That's, uh, when we do that, we, we're showing His love. All right? Rate yourself quickly. How are you doing there? And then he says, he says, love is not self-seeking. Now, this is a big one. <laughs> because such a big part of our nature is, is selfish and self-seeking. Meaning, I want the best for me. Come on. Isn't that? We want the best for me, for my family. But you see, that's being self-seeking. If we are selfless, it means I, I want the best for others. It doesn't mean I want bad for me or bad for my family. But my eyes, my attention is not on me all the time. I want what's good for you. I want what's best for you. And so being selfless is, is, is not saying how can I get the most out of you? <laughs> Being selfless is actually saying, how can I be a blessing to you? How can I make a, a difference in your life? And if you think about it, one of the main reasons people get divorced, marriages break up, it's not because of affairs and stuff like that. that that's the after effects of selfishness. A lot of the, the nonsense and drama in relationships and in marriages, it's just selfish. People are just, just, it's all around me. And I think if we had to go into a marriage relationship saying, how can I be the best husband, the best wife to this person? How, how can I bless them? How can I make their life easier? If we had to go into a relationship, into a marriage with that kind of attitude, I'm telling you, that's a recipe for success. We're going to do well. So, rate yourself quickly. How are you doing in terms of selfishness or selflessness? And then he says this, love is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. This is a big one. It keeps no record of wrongs. Have you noticed some people... It's almost like they're walking around with an imaginary clipboard. You don't know it. You don't see it. But they've got it. And they take off every time you do something wrong. Ah, you see, there it goes again. Take it off. Ah, he didn't see that. He didn't say the right. Ah, you see? And they're constantly busy ticking off. And you, you none the wiser. You know, you're just loving life and having a good time, and then one day, out of the blue, when you expect it the least, that clipboard comes out. You always, I've got proof. <laughs> and you look at that, and you're like, good heavens. <laughs> Do you want to tell me you've been walking around with a clipboard <laughs> for the last year? Is, is this, you, you're looking for bad instead of for good? And then you, you think we're going to have a, a, a great relationship? That's not love. That's not love. Love doesn't look for mistakes. Doesn't go out looking for faults. Love for, for, forgives and forgets. Because we all make mistakes. Because the same clipboard I'm using... To rate you, I may fail even worse at that thing. And so I want to I wanna ask you, if, if you're in a marriage relationship and you're doing that, 
I want to say to you, unless you change that, it's doomed. It will fail. And so I sense, I sense for a couple of people today, God is saying to you, throw that stupid clipboard away. Get rid of that thing. And you may think by doing that, you know, I'm setting him free. No, 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 no. You're setting yourself free. <laughs> Get rid of that thing. You'll never have a good relationship by doing that. All right? So how are you doing in that area? And then he says this. He says, love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. What does that mean? Another translation says, love does not rejoice in unrighteousness. That simply means we can't celebrate what God says is wrong. Sometimes we think, oh, but, but I love this person. You know, the, it's a family member, it's a friend, and, and I love them. But they're busy with sin in their lives. And we, can't, we dare not celebrate that. So let, let's say, for instance, you've got a friend at work, and, 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 and this friend is, is, is married to a girl, and she's a piece of work, I'm telling you. You feel so sorry for this poor guy. She should never have gotten married to this, to this girl, you know. And then, then he, he meets this other girl at the office, and you're looking at it, and you're thinking, man, they should have been together. This is like a match made in heaven. No, he's married. This is adultery. Come on. We cannot celebrate what God says is wrong. And so we're going to have it on the movies that we watch. And, and we get conditioned to these things. Even though we love people. Love them. It doesn't mean we've got to be mean to them. If their lifestyle doesn't line up with God's word, please hear me. Love them. But we don't approve of the lifestyle. We love the person, all right? We don't have to be mean toward that, that person. Let's move on quickly. He, he says, he ends off with this. He says, love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. And so what he's saying is, love doesn't just throw in the towel just because somebody said something I didn't like, <laughs> or they did something I didn't like, and now I'm just throwing the towel, I'm done with this relationship. No, no. <sighs> We're also going to do things they don't like and say things we shouldn't have said. We don't just, we don't just throw in the towel every time something happens, but it's hopeful. In other words, it's going to get better. And it endures. That love will stay with them, will stick with them. Because it's going to get better. They're going to get through their nonsense. Love stays with them through thick and thin, through good and, and through bad. And for those of us who are married, come on. Isn't that what we promised in front of the altar when we made our vows to one another? For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. Come on. Till death do us part. I will love you and I'll honor you for the rest of my life. Those are the marriage vows we made. And then he carries on and he says, love never fails. Love never fails. <laughs> and I think, I think it's pretty self-explanatory that if we had to love people the way he's just unpacked it for us, those relationships aren't going to fail. Come on. If you had to love your spouse like that, marriage is not going to fail. If you had to love some family members and friends this way, be patient, be kind, not be self-seeking, all of those things, those things aren't going to fail. So you could say, love is like glue. That's the glue. That's the thing that keeps it together. And it's not the kind of love that, oh, you know, we just have love. No, no. If we have this kind of love, where it's patient and kind and bless you and respectful and all of those things, all right? <laughs> That's real love, all right? And so if we do that, we're going we're gonna to stay together. Real love is like glue. It holds our relationships together. Now, 
you're sitting here this morning and you're saying, yo, Leonard, I thought I, thought I was quite a lovable person, but, but clearly, you know, I've got a couple of twos on my score there. Join the club. Join the club. Because there's some of those areas where I'm okay. Six, maybe seven. There are other areas where uh, I'm not that okay at all. All right? I'm maybe a two or a three. And then there's some areas where I used to be a zero. <laughs> but I've grown a little bit. And I'm a five. You know what a five is? Average. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not great either. It means I've grown, but I've still got quite a bit of room to, to still grow. And so there are areas where I used to be low, and, and I've liked the patience thing. You can ask my wife, I've grown there, I've grown, but I'm still not there yet, all right. And so I'm, I'm growing, and I'm asking us today, come on, grow with me, develop this area with me. And, and, and I've specifically broken it up into, into, into individual pieces because in some areas we're doing okay. And in other areas I'm like, ah, I need to grow in that area. And when you recognize it, that's when you grow. Otherwise you just say, no, I think I'm a pretty lovable person. I get along well with, with people. Yes, until you're in the fast lane, eh? <laughs> and so let's keep growing in those areas. But the good news, let me just end off with some good news. The good news is that you already have love in your heart. It's there. <laughs> Scripture tells us, Romans 5.5, 5, look at this. God's love has been poured out into, his heart, into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. It's poured into your heart, my heart. It's there. You've just got to allow it to flow through you. Listen, love is like glue. When it's in the container, it means nothing. You've got to release it from the container before it can do anything. It's exactly the same with love. It's in our hearts. Let it flow through you. And so it's easy for me to say, oh, I love people. I love people. Ah, I want people to say, I know you love me because you're patient, because you're kind. Because you're selfless, I can see it in your life. And at the end of the day, come on, that's what we want. Not to think we've arrived. We want other people to see it. Love shows. If there's love for God, there will be love for people, and it will show in our lives. So let me end off quickly with this last story, and, and then we're done. So a couple of weeks ago, I had a, a couple who came out, they were first-time visitors, met me upstairs in the foyer to have coffee, and I asked them, as I, as I usually ask the, the folks, you know, what made you come here? Somebody invite you, or you're new to the area, or you drive past and see the church, and, and so they said, no, 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 we are actually new to the area, but um, her mother had recommended that they come to the church. Mother stays in another part of the country, has never been to the church. Somebody sent her a link once of one of our, our sermons and said, watch this. And since then, she's been watching faithfully every single Sunday, apparently. And so this lady says to me, she says, you know, my, my mother, she's in her 80s. She watches every single Sunday. And when she heard we coming to, to, to Joburg, she said, you've got to go to Maranatha, got to go. So she said, do you mind if we get a picture with you just as evidence and we can send it? <laughs> Come, come, come. <laughs> so I'm posing, you know, for Granny, yeah, we're taking a picture. And then I said, I said, can you call your mother? I said, call her. Tell her where you are. I want to speak to her. And so I did. I get the Granny on the line. First she thinks, that, you know, they're busy, they're busy pranking her or something. And then she realizes, you know, this is real. And, and she just, she's, she's blown away. She, she can't believe it. And when I gave the, the, the phone back to the daughter, she was in tears. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm off in tears. She's in tears. What's happening, you know? She just said, she said, you know, you never believe what this will mean to my mother. Showing love to people is not complicated, folks. It's not complicated. Let's just take our eyes off ourselves. 
for just a couple of moments and just look for ways to be kind to the people around us. And so if you have somebody in your small group, for instance, got to be at the airport tomorrow morning at the crack of dawn, first thing, you know, offer to take them to the airport. They say, no, 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 I'll, I'll take Uber. You know, it, it, it's fine. No, don't worry, I'll take you. What time is it? Four o'clock. Four o'clock. <laughs> I'll take you. No problem. <laughs> Let's say you have somebody in your small group, and they, they're sick, and they, they're battling to cook for themselves. Just take them a meal, man. Just, just bless them. Love is not complicated. Love simply means... We take our eyes off of ourselves. And scripture says, if you love God, <laughs> if you really love him, you're going to love the people around about you. It'll show. Come, let's stand. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love toward us. When we look at our own lives, such a big part of our lives, we, we, we are really not lovable individuals. We're pretty miserable at times. And yet you love us. And it, it just, it blows our minds. And so Lord, we just want to respond and love you back. But also we realize today how important it is to love the people around us. And so we come and we say, Lord, just help me just to practically love those around me this coming week, especially those in my home, in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Bless you.